Why are you missing your four hands long? Why are they flying out? Short answer is your racket face is open. Wherever the racket face is pointing when you're making contact is where the ball goes. But there are several reasons. And in this video, I'm going to show you what those reasons are and of course, how to fix them. If we look at really good, solid, consistent forehands, you'll notice that at contact point, the racket face is either perpendicular to the ground or neutral or even ever so slightly closed. And that has something to do with the grip and how you grip the racket will demand how you swing, your swing path, and where you're making contact. I'm not outright saying that a continental grip per se is wrong, but there's a reason why we don't teach it anymore. Because with newer technology of the rackets and the strings, you can now swing so fast that if you're in a continental grip, it's very, very likely that your racket face is a half a degree open. And that can be a quite dramatic effect, meaning right into the fence. So ideally what we're teaching now is an Eastern forehand grip or a semi-Western. I'm not a big fan of a full Western because that has its own issues, but I'm certainly not teaching a continental forehand grip. So how do I find my Eastern and the semi-Western? So your Eastern forehand grip, underside of your index finger knuckle and the meaty part of your palm, if you go from the top here, this is bevel number one, number two, number three. So both of those points need to be on the third bevel. Think about Roger Federer, Hans Jabor. If you want a semi-Western, you mosey on over one bevel. So you're on bevel number four. So it looks something like that. And between those two grips, those are the preferred grips on both tours. And most really good forehand players have one of these grips or something in between. Side note. If you are comparing your forehand to a pro's forehand, make sure that you compare the same grip. So for instance, if you were in an Eastern forehand grip, but you're looking at Iga Swiatek's forehand, it's not gonna look the same. And you're probably not gonna pick up a whole lot of helpful tips from that because that's oranges to apples. So make sure you compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Another reason why your racket face might be open is that you're falling off the shot. And there's a difference between hitting off the back foot and falling off the shot. So let me demonstrate. So falling off the ball means that my entire body weight falls backwards and my head is no longer over my center of gravity. So if I'm doing this here, I wanna to try to keep my balance and a lot of time the racket face is open, that's when I launch. And this could be because I'm too late in my preparation, because the ball is too fast, or I just didn't move. On the other hand, if you load off the back foot, yes, you have most of your body weight on your back foot. And as you're hitting, you transfer that body weight, if you're right-hander from the right to the left, and it might look like I'm leaning backwards. But the difference there is that I still have my head over my center of gravity. So I'm just shifting my weight there and I'm not falling off. And if I prepare properly, which actually exploits the loading of the back leg, that is a really stable shot. And you will see people literally lift it up in the air and that might look off balance, but you're still fully in control of your body. Whereas when you're falling off, all hell breaks loose. Another time when players do fall back is when a ball comes really flat, really hard, and we're trying to lift the ball by falling back and off. So instead of sitting down low to the ball and potentially shorten up your take back here and almost blocking the ball, we're trying to give us more time by falling off. And that's oftentimes resulting in a shank off the bottom frame. Either you miss it outright or it just sits up there, you lose control of the ball. So if you want to know how to master that shot, I recommend that you watch the WTA tour a little bit more because women tend to, not everybody, but tend to play a little closer to the baseline and a little flatter. So they will be forced to hit those balls a whole lot. And Iga Swiatek, Irina Sabalenka, or Caroline Garcia are perfect in how they're handling those shots. Here's a great drill for the having to sit down low to control the ball. Another reason why your racket face may open is that you're simply too late. You're not getting the racket face up to contact point in a timely manner so that it can be neutral or even ever so slightly closed. And that can be timing, 
or yes, the size of your take back. But I'm not categorically saying that you should shorten up your take back. I'm not going anywhere near that you should not break the plane. Absolutely not. I'm not going like, oh, you need an ATP forehand because that's total baloney. If you make consistent and controlled contact out in front, I don't care what you do before your stroke. You can do a cartwheel. But if you do hit late a whole lot, then you may have to look at the size of your take back. But it could also be just wrong timing. So let's work on both. So as a rule of thumb, as you're rallying, and I'm talking about rally balls, of course there's exceptions. You want to be on the highest and furthest part of your take back so that off the bounce, the ball's traveling to you, you can now drop and drive up and forward to your contact point. And that timing gives you enough time to get your contact out in front and have that racket face ever so slightly closed or neutral. So one of the best ways to finding out if you have okay timing is to just film yourself. It could very well be that you have too long of a pause. Could be that you're just somewhere hitchy in your take back and that's something that you can see on video. So you want to make sure that you have one continuous smooth motion. Of course you may have to stray away from that rule of thumb. So for instance on serves you may not have the time for a full take back, whether you keep it to the right of your body or not. It doesn't matter. You see Madison Keys all the time shortening up that take back. So you're returning and shorten up that take back so that you have your contact point out in front. Or as we already talked about, the deeper, harder, flatter shots, where again, you don't have the time to move back and get a whole swing in. You may have to shorten up your take back there as well. You want to replicate the same contact point and the same swing path if it's a correct one as many times as possible and one of my coaches always used to say it's the legs that enable you to do that so if you look at really good players forehand or backhand doesn't matter they're covering a whole lot of ground they're not just standing on the baseline and then making up stuff they're trying to replicate the same good technique over and over by adjusting to the depth the height and the speed of the ball so that is your first weapon, the feet. And we're gonna do a couple of drills for that. The other thing is, sometimes you have to adjust your swing. And I got the drills for that as well. Time to adjust. Now that we eliminated the reasons why you're missing balls deep, let's add to it. Let's make your forehand a weapon and add really heavy topspin because that is something that your opponents are not going to like. So check out this video. 